Good morning. Welcome to the morning service. Lamentations 3.23 says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Let's sing it together. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassions, they fail not. As Thou hast been, Thou forever wilt be. Great is Thy faithfulness, great is Thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning. is for us. Who can be against us? We have nothing to fear. You hear me when I call. You are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. Whom shall the enemy underneath my feet you are my sword and shield though troubles linger still whom shall I fear I know who goes before me I know who stands behind the God of angel armies is always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the God of angel armies is always by my side my strength is in your name for you alone can save you will deliver Yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies 
because God is by our side. Here's some announcements. Well, thank you, Pastor Daryl. God is good. And all the time, God is good. good. Boy, he sure is. I hope that uh, you have assurance of that this morning. Uh, Wherever you are watching this, we're glad that you're tuning in with us and uh, just looking forward to just the time that we've got together this morning, even though we are apart. Um, As you know, lots of uh, things here at the church are are not happening, but there also are still a lot of things happening. And uh, I'm afraid I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but we do just want to reiterate um, what is going on so that if you have opportunity to join us with any of these things, that that you know what's going on and you're able to uh, take take part of that. So just want to remind you that we, we do have the morning devotion, uh, 11 o'clock on Facebook, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. So uh, take advantage of that if you uh, have time for that. The men's Bible study Thursday morning is taking place, ladies' Bible study morning. Uh, excuse me, ladies' Bible study on Thursday morning is also taking place. Um, if you uh, are normally a part of that and, and aren't sure how to get connected, call the church office. We'll make sure you have the information you need to connect to those groups. Um, also, the, the youth are still meeting on Wednesday night uh, through Instagram, and the Wednesday night prayer service has started back up. And so if you would like to join us for the Wednesday night prayer service, it's Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. And the best way to get the info for that is if you go to our our webpage, hopb.org, and click on the Contact Us link. And uh, if you click on that link and then just scroll down, you'll see a section in red. And that's the section that you can fill out to get the uh, to the get the link and the information for signing in to the Wednesday night Bible study group and prayer meeting. So that's at seven o'clock on Wednesdays. Info is on the church webpage on the contact us link. Also, the food ministry continues on on uh, Monday and Wednesday morning. Pantry of Hope is giving out. Uh, food also on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings, uh, produce is, is being distributed. And so that's between 9 and 12. And so those ministries are continuing, as is the soup kitchen, which is 11 o'clock on Wednesday mornings to go orders only. So uh, a bunch of things uh, still happening. And uh, if if you have uh, a group that uh, you're normally part of and 
Um, you're not sure what's going on, call somebody. Your Sunday school class be, this is a great week to just touch base with uh, people that you would normally see on a Sunday morning. Pick up the phone call, pick up the phone and give them a call um, and just ask them how they're doing, what's going on, and uh, just fill them in with what you've been up to and have a word of prayer together. So that'd be a great thing to do this week, just each one of us reaching out to each, each other. And that's a great way that we can be ministering even though we're not together on a morning like this morning. Um, I did just want to make sure you had the the address of the church if you were wanting to mail something. Um, our, we've a, a lot of you have been mailing in tithes and offerings, and we're seeing a variety of addresses. and the And the post uh, the postal service has been gracious, and they're getting them all to us. But it is P.O. Box fourteen seventy five, Blairsville, Georgia. 30514. And uh, we've had a, a variety of uh, addresses labeled, um, and we've received them, but just want to pass that along. We would normally be taking an offering if we were together, and so uh, if, if that's something that uh, you normally do on a Sunday morning and you want to still be able to do that, you can go to our web uh, our webpage, hopb.org, and there is a link there for online giving. I've just given you our mailing address and uh, you can stop by at the church office, but that uh, um, we're, we're trying to keep the office open mostly during our regular hours, although you may show up and uh, we might not be here, but um, we're trying to keep that available as well. So uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and, uh, and, um, and just thank him for his many blessings in our lives. Heavenly Father, um, Lord, we are just thankful for how, um, how you are so good and you're so gracious to us. And um, Lord, even during a time like this where m many of us have seen a, a change in our income, uh, maybe a change in our savings accounts, um, uncertainty about uh, work for tomorrow or next week or the week after, Lord, we still have confidence that you are Jehovah Jireh and that you do provide for each and every one of our needs, Lord. And we're, we're thanking you for that this morning. And we're, um, we're just holding on to that. We have confidence that you are who you say that you are. And, uh, and Lord, so um, during this time, whether uh, this is a time of plenty for us or a time of little, um, like the Apostle Paul, Lord, I pray that we would uh, be able to be content with what you have given us during this time. Uh, Heavenly Father, I do want to pray for some of our church members uh, going through different things this week. You know uh, where each one of them is this morning and, and just uh, what they're facing. But Lord, we're just praying, uh, continuing to pray for Gary Lee as he's recovering from his uh, abdominal surgery. Uh, praying for Herbie. Uh, Lord, we just pray that the, his hip would uh, regain strength, that it would stay in the socket, and uh, that, Lord, he wouldn't have any further complications um, on, on that joint, Lord. And uh, Lord, we're praying for Gwen Brees with the cancer diagnosis. And uh, Lord, I know she's been able to see the doctors this week. And God, we just ask that you would um, just guide their steps. We ask for, for healing uh, on, on Gwen's behalf. Um, Lord, also praying for Liz Pingziger uh, with the passing of her son, Brett, this week. Lord, we ask that you would comfort her, that you'd wrap her arms around her. Just uh, what a difficult time to, to lose a, a loved one, a child, when um, this social distancing is happening. God, I pray that you would uh, meet every one of her needs this week. Lord, we're just thankful that you know each and every one of these situations and that you are uh, providing in each case. Lord, we especially want to pray for um, our healthcare workers who just continue to work hard to uh, meet the needs and to um, take care of those who are, are sick and especially those who are caring for COVID-19 patients. Lord, we ask that you protect them, that you'd strengthen them, that you'd give them the endurance that they need. Lord, I thank you for the, the teachers and our, and our school administration in this county as they're just working hard to continue to um, make every effort to, to uh, educate our kids and to um, work hard to provide food and meals uh, for students who, who need a, a, a midday meal. Uh, Lord, we just ask that you would give them good health, that you would protect them, that you would um, in, encourage them during this time when they're doing their best to uh, take care of uh, so many young lives. 
Uh, Lord, just uh, grateful for, for this church and grateful for the other churches that are meeting online this morning. We just ask that you would work mightily both in our services and in, the, in theirs as well. Lord, we thank you for those who um, uh, are, are giving this morning or giving this week. Lord, I pray that you would allow us to be good stewards of everything that you uh, allow us to work with. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's, uh, let's get our Bibles, let's open God's Word, and uh, looking forward to uh, what the Lord has for us through Pastor Jerry this morning. Thank you, Pastor Jeff, and good morning to you. Uh, way out there, I'm looking out uh, of a sanctuary. I don't see you, but I know that we're connected, and uh, I'm thankful that we're able to continue doing that. And I encourage you to stay connected to, to each other as a, as a church family. Stay connected to your communities, and most of all, stay connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, someone, someone uh, I was trying to figure out, I was asking this morning, uh, what, what week are we into in this uh, COVID-19 thing? And uh, it seems like with me, the weeks run together. I don't know if this is week seven, week six. Somebody said, I don't know, but it's, it's actually March 54th, and uh, it's, it seems that way. So uh, it's kind of lose track of, of time, and uh, I continue to be amazed and humbled uh, by you, our church family, your, your involvement, your love for people, uh, your response to needs, that those of you that are, people come by on a regular basis out front of the Family Life Center and pick up masks that you have made and left out there in a container so they can come and get them without, without any contact. Uh, your compassion and the compassion of this community. Uh, many people, uh, the chamber has put us on their website and the, the food ministry, and many people are calling and saying, we want to we wanna buy food. We want to help buy food to feed those who, who are needing help during this time. And those kind of things are, are exciting, uh, they're, but they're very humbling also. And we as a ministry staff... Uh, and, and, and continue to, to just pray for you and know that you're praying for us. Uh, and behind our, our mask and behind the social distancing, uh, we're smiling. I've I got a face mask that Barbie's finally made me wear and when I get out uh, in, in places. And so I've drawn a smile on the front. It's kind of warp-sided. Uh, the teeth aren't, aren't there, but that's probably me. But I'm just a little bit concerned. One day this week, uh, I was going to have to, to be out, and uh, so I was talking to Barbie, and she finally relented and said, okay, okay, you can, go, you can go do that, but you need to promise me that you'll put your makeup on, and about the time she said makeup, my eyes went up, and she said, I mean your mask, so uh, <laughs> we've, uh, we, even though it might help, I've really not gone to the extreme of, of putting makeup on yet, but I, but I have relented and in, in wearing the mask, but seriously... If, you're, if, you're, if there's a need that you have uh, that we can help you with, please reach out. As Jeff said, go to the website, contact us, email us, call us. Uh, we're there, and, and we will minister in a, in a safe uh, but hopefully very effective way and, and uh, continue to do that. Uh, I want to also thank uh, each of you for all that you're doing for the community. So... As we talk and as talk turns to uh, how we're going to reopen our economy and what reopening our country looks like, um, as a ministry staff, we're focusing and talking a lot about uh, what we've learned or what we are learning through this, uh, through uh, YouTubing and through Facebooking and through ministering uh, in these unique times. Um, so I was just, I was sharing with someone one day this week, I said, well, you know that, that God continues to bring good out of difficult situations. And uh, one of the things, good things, I think that's already come out of uh, the situation that our country is in, is that it's, it's really helping us to realize, uh, and re maybe sometimes to rearrange our priorities, it's helping us to realize what's important. Uh, family is important. Uh, you, our church family, uh, is important. God's family is important. And uh, the Apostle Paul uh, has some words to this effect. Jeff, I encourage you to go ahead and get your Bibles, uh, 
open up your iPads or your phones. But go with me, if you will, to the book of Philippians, chapter 3. And I'm going to be reading this morning from the New Living Translation. But this is good in whatever translation you've got. But Paul, addressing his Philippian uh, brothers and sisters, says, Whatever happens, dear friends, may the Lord give you joy. Whatever happens... May the Lord give you joy. And listen to what he said. He said, I never get tired of telling you this. And I'm doing this for your own good. Then uh, as Paul says that, then he talks about the, 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 the kind of the contention and the discussion that's been going on about uh, maybe significance of, of, of what people do and the branding points and all this. Paul goes on and he talks about his personal resume of, of, of his heritage and who he was and his kinfolk and all this. And then he even talks about his religious report card. Uh, and he was checking down there VSs if you're really young or, or uh, A's and B's in this religious report card. And then he picks up this in verse 7 of Philippians 3. And let me read. He said, I once thought all these things were so important. But now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. There was a time in Paul's life when, like we are doing, uh, situations and circumstances uh, made him take a step back and reevaluate. And Paul realized that what he had been living for was all the wrong things. And what he had been doing, not only were, was a lot of them the wrong things, but he had been doing them with the wrong motives. And so he realized, he realized now what was important. And, and I know that's one of the lessons that we're learning as, as a church family, as a ministry staff, and as a community, as a nation, maybe, maybe even, that we're learning that. Listen to how Paul continues. He said, yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the priceless gain of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. I have discarded, he says, he says, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I may have Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own goodness or my ability to obey God's law, but I trust Christ to save me. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. As a result, I can really know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I can learn what it means to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that somehow I can experience the resurrection from the dead. Last week, we talked about the resurrection, and we talked about the difference the resur- resurrection makes in our lives. And we really zeroed in specifically and talked about uh, the difference that the resurrection made in the life of Peter as a follower of Christ. Uh, before even seeing all the miracles, hearing the teachings, and, uh, and being with him. Yet when, uh, when the time came to stand up with him, Peter ran. But after Peter's experience with the uh, empty tomb, and meeting the resurrected Lord, he became fearless, bold, and, and, and sharing. And so Paul uh, is, is talking about this, this difference that has come in his life from knowing Christ, the resurrected Lord. And he's, he's, I love this because in verse uh, 6 and verse 7, and uh, especially verse 8 and 10, he doesn't say so that, that I can gain a priceless knowledge about Christ. Or he doesn't say that I can really know more about Christ. But he says that I can gain knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, that I may know him. And then he says, and I can really know Christ. I was praying this week and said, man, it makes all the difference and what's going on and what we're learning. And many people, uh, again, it's been a time of reprioritizing, 
of really deciding what's important and what's significant. And for some of them, that's, that's getting back to realizing this relationship with Christ is the most important thing that we could, we could ever focus on. And sometimes it would get pushed, maybe not off the stovetop, but at least to the back burner in life before. But the last several weeks possibly has helped us to realize that it's not just knowing more about God. It's not just knowing more about Jesus Christ that we mean, that we need. But it's knowing him more. And in, and in your life and in my life, that's what Jesus desires. He, he really wants us to know him. That was Paul's one wish. He said that this, this one thing is, is what I desire, is that I would know him. That through all that is going on all around us, that we would not settle for just knowing more about him. That we would not settle just for learning more facts or more figures. Uh, the days for that and the time for that surely are past, surely over. But that we would know him. Know him in a relationship. Know him in a way that the innermost needs of our, of our lives and of our families, our loved ones, our nation, our world, knowing that in those innermost ways we go to him and he's there. And, and we know that he hears. In some way, some miraculous way, through his word, through the Holy Spirit, we hear him speaking to us and we experience his peace in the midst of a lot of unanswered questions and a lot of uncertainty. He brings that peace that calms us and that settles us and that focuses us on him. Paul is sharing that. Listen to how Paul finishes this. Let me finish these verses and then I want to close out with you. Paul, Paul said, now, don't get me wrong. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved all these things or I've already reached perfection. But he said, I keep working toward that day when I will finally be all that Jesus Christ saved me for and wants me to be. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I like that. Hey, he's still working on us to make us what he wants us to be. Isn't that what the Course said? Uh, he's still work working on us. None of us are perfected, but wouldn't we with him? He'll complete that job. But until then, we're kind of a work in progress. Paul goes on and says, no, dear friends, I'm still not all that I should be, but I am focusing all my energies on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I strain to reach the end of the race and to receive the prize for which God through Jesus Christ, is calling us up to heaven. Wow. I hope all of you who are mature Christians will agree on these things, Paul says. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must be sure to obey the truth we have learned already. Wow. It's neat words from Paul. It's neat words this morning to share with you that Knowing him in a relationship is what he desires. Call him. Call on him. Talk to him. Listen to him. Enjoy the presence and the peace that his presence brings. I'm going to pray just a minute and, and surely in, in, in invite you if, you. if you don't know him today as your Savior, to ask him to come into your heart. Man. Every day, and we talk about the uncertainty of these times, but I want to tell you, it's not just the COVID-19 times. Every day, every day, we live in uncertain times. Life is uncertain. And you know that, and I know that. But he is sure, and his words and his promises are steadfast and true. And we can stand on them. We can trust them. When we don't know what else, we can trust him. So let me, let me pray with you, and then I want to have a word. Father, just want to thank you this morning that you make it very clear 
that this thing we call Christianity is not about religion. It's not about knowing a bunch of stories necessarily or facts or figures. It's not about being able to to quote those back. But it's about knowing you, not knowing about you. Father, I think all the difference that makes in relationships. Lord, I, I don't want to settle for just knowing about Barbie. But Lord, I, wanted to, I had to get to know her for myself. And now, even after almost 50 years, she's amazing, an amazing lady. That I find like a, like a jewel, it's like a diamond. That even every day I see new facets of her life that sparkle and reflect your glory. And I'm, I'm overjoyed. But that's knowing her. And that's the difference between knowing her and knowing about her. And Father, I'm just, I'm just so um, concerned that in a time like this, I don't want anyone who's listened to this to settle for knowing about you. I don't want them to have to settle for knowing what I share about you. But Lord, that we walk in a relationship that they say, no, I, I don't know him for jury. I know him for me. And I pray that. And it's my prayer, Lord, that if there's any right now that maybe have been settling for less than knowing you, that this morning or today, whenever they're listening to this, that they're going to say, I want to know you. Reveal yourself to me. I believe that you are the Son of God, the Savior of the world, who loved me enough to die on the cross for my sins. And knowing that and believing that, I'm believing and trusting that if I ask you to come into my life, you will. So come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Make your residence there. Let your peace guide me, strengthen me, settle me in your name. Father, I also want to pray for my brother or sister that all of a sudden they found themselves like Peter or like Paul in a situation and circumstances that demands that we step back and take a look at what we've been living for. And that we step back and realize maybe that what's eternally important. And that as we are, it's not that we've never trusted you, we have, but Lord, that we realize now that uh, the cares of this life and the cares of other things was pushing on that relationship time with you. And now this morning, we just want to say thank you, Jesus, that in the midst of, of bad things that have been happening, that you're bringing good into my life, maybe into my, the life of my family or my, or my friends. Thank you, Lord. Let us take what we're learned and what we're living out and carry it through even after these, this COVID-19 thing that we're in. In Christ I pray, amen. I want to thank you for uh, last week. Got a lot of people that uh, texted me or emailed and, and called and let us know how you had shared communion together as a family after our Easter service. And uh, just a, it's just a touch point. Really means a lot. Uh, please feel free. Call the church. Uh, get on the, you can go to our website, uh, site. Jeff's mentioned that, hopb.org. And there's ways to, to email us and, and stay connected with us. And uh, I just appreciate that. I love you. God bless you. Have a blessed day living knowing him.